60 horsepower and now he's got a dry circuit and it'll be a, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't beat his three minutes 41.7 alongside him is the French driver Jacques Etat who is driving an Audi coupe and making up the front rank is British driver Tony Proctor in his mighty Ford Capri 3.4 litre engine but it's in the third row that the interest and excitement is because there in the white escort is Martin Shanker and Trevor Hopkins is on to his right. Now Martin Shanker has got four wheel drive, he's got 500 horsepower, he's four times European champion, he's uh, moistened his glove palms and he's obviously ready for action. And if he's not in about second place by the time he gets to the first right-hander at uh, paddock turn, I shall be very surprised indeed that the acceleration of that Zack Speed powered Ford Escort is absolutely electrifying. Tony Proctor's got a lot of horsepower on the left, but of course, Nitty Markey on the right front of your picture in the Porsche is the target man for Martin Chanker. Shanker's already through level with the second row. And now he's taking Aita and he's in second place, sure enough. A sensational start by Martin Shanker, the European champion, who's won 21 races in this car already this season. And he's right up now with the pole position man, or the front row man, Seppo Nittimaki, fastest of the time today so far. Ahead of Propolis, the Cypriot driver, and now Martin Shanker leads at Druids on lap one, leaving the rest trailing astern, including Trevor Hopkins, who is well down there. And Shanker goes into Langley's gap, and then Nitty Markey hits the tyre markers on the left, nearly upends his car. Mavropolis in the Audi Quattro, the black car, is in third position. Aita is in fourth place. And Martin Schenker goes up the slight rise to hop his drop, turns right, drops down off the shale onto the tarmac, which is drying out rapidly. And Dimi Mavropoulos, number eight, is driving a superb race because he's now right up with second place man, but dropping back a bit as, and sprinting through. He lost time there. Now here is Schenker into the chicane. In second place, Nitty Markey there in the Porsche. In third position, number seven is Dennis Marcel in the four-wheel drive turbocharged Matra Marina with its two-litre engine, mid-engine car. And Mavropolis is in fourth place. So a great scrap between... And there's somebody gone off at Hobby's drop and it looks like Trevor Hopkins himself. That looks like Hopkins' car to me. It is, it's Trevor Hopkins himself who's been caught out because Trevor Hopkins is the man who built this part of the rallycross circuit and the red flags are out, the race is being stopped. Yeah, there is Trevor, he's at the front of the car, the crew cut at the front of the car without a helmet on, with the yellow bands around his arms. That's Trevor Hopkins, so he has indeed got out of the car, and now his concern is not for himself, because he's obviously perfectly all right, smiling as ever. There he is, masterminding the operation. All together, chaps. One, two, three, heave. Ah, it's a ski roof that they have on the uh, Fiesta. The ambulance is not needed, I'm glad to say, but it's very reassuring to see that it was there so quickly and efficiently. That's the Thames Estuary Automobile Club ambulance. And the race will be rerun now. I wonder if Trevor Hopkins' very powerful Fiesta, which produces some 260 brake horsepower, is in a fit state to run. Well, it hasn't got a windscreen, I can tell you that. A massive crowd at Brands Hatch, I say again, the biggest I'm sure there's ever been for a rallycross event in Britain, is now watching the competitors for the third race in the second round of heats. And there is Stig Blomqvist, 
the World Rally Champion of 1984 in his own Audi Quattro. He was fourth fastest in the first heat, behind Seppo Nittimaki, behind Martin Schenker, and behind, and this is a wonderful performance, Trevor Reeves, the English driver, in the two-wheel drive for Fiesta. In the second rank is Andy Benzer in the Audi Quattro four-wheel drive car. That's between Atkinson and Mokes. And on Benzer's left, your right, is Barry Hathaway, who is the brother of Graham Hathaway, who's an ex-British rally cross champion. And look at Blomqvist. Rockets away, completely dry now at Paddock Turn. Des Winks in the Porsche in second position as they drop down, tumble downhill into the left-hander at the S's. Blomqvist goes through the second part of that corner, the right-hander. In third position is uh, Ivan Mokes. Andy Benzer's up into, third, into second position because he's past Des Winks. And it's now a battle with Rob Gibson there, number 15, the top British driver in the qualifying races which were held the day before. And so now Rob Gibson is in fourth position. Can he catch the Porsche of Des Winks in front of him? And it looks to me as though he's certainly doing it because number 15, Rob Gibson from Goostery in Yorkshire, is right up with Des Winks as they go into Hoppy's drop. Meanwhile, inside Stick Rockfist Audi, here's the driver's eye view of the action as he slips and slides his 400 horsepower projectile around France. Off the tarmac, onto the shale, downhill, it's bumpy here, down a gear, into the left-hander, Swing it right, and now up the hill. Now there's Benson, second. Now Winks and Gibson, as Andy Benson slides out of the S's. It's still, uh, Gibson has, has dropped a place because Ivan Mokes has gone ahead of him. Ivan Mokes is in fourth position behind Des Winks in the red, red Porsche. And Rob Gibson's having all sorts of trouble. He's got on the very slippery stuff and Will Gollum's Gol got ahead of him. So down to sixth position goes Rob Gibson. Now off the knife edge, it's really slippery here. Hoppy's drop, right-handed, onto the tarmac again. Boot down, up a gear, and flat for the chicane. Two laps completed now. Steve Blomqvist leading. He's only got half a lap to go in this race in the second heat. And Andy Benzer is holding his second position. But Blomqvist will be extremely anxious to put up a very quick time. He was only fourth fastest in the first heat with a time of 3 minutes 43.8, which was over two seconds slower than the quickest, which was Seppo Nittimaki. So, Steve Blomqvist has got a target not to win the race, he's going to do that very easily, but to win it in the shortest time possible. Handling that Audi Quattro superb, sliding it round the right-hander at Ruiz, lining it up for the left-hander at Langley's gap, putting his foot down, punching straight through the gap, onto the slippery knife edge, taking the chequered flag to win the race, very convincingly from Austrian Andy Benzer in the Audi Quattro 80. And third will be Des Winks and in fourth position Ivan Mokes. After Trevor Hopkins debacle at his own Hoppy's drop, the race is being rerun. And in the prime position, Seppo Nittimaki, the fastest man of the day so far, certainly in the first heats, in that 630 horsepower rear wheel drive Porsche. This is the man who won the Lyndon round of the European Championship of this year. There is Jacques Aita in his Audi Coupe with a stoved inside. 
But look at this. Behind them is Martin Shanker, who was leading very convincingly when the race was stopped. He's in the third row. Martin Shanker carrying the zero number and cooling the inside of his car. That's why he's flapping the door. The man from Norway, four times European Rallycross champion, including 1984. And in this car, this season, the Zack Speed turbo car, guard track, four-wheel drive car, which has cost Martin Shanker some £55,000 of his own money. He has won 21 international Rallycross races this year to dominate the sport. And I expect him to dominate this race too. There he goes through the gap. Now, Nitty Markey leads and Shanker throws the car sideways incredibly as they go into paddock turn and with an amazing bit of driving that shows experience and reflexes from the third row he is in the lead before he even gets to the S's with Nitty Marky second Mavropoulos in, the, in uh, third position in the Audi Quattro and Ata well up in the race and Sid Nitty Marky bumping and boring there's the battle for second place and Nitty Marky seems to have been thrown by the way that Martin Shanker caught and passed him. And, but nevertheless, Nitty Marky retakes the second place. And Denis Marcel, the Frenchman, the French Rallycross champion in his Matra Murina, is the man who came through from the last rank, from the fourth row to that third position, only to lose it. So it's Nitty Marky second now. Aita is in third position. Marcel has dropped back. And here, completing the lap, is Martin Shanker in the lead, as usual. And frankly, it would seem that nothing short of mechanical trouble is going to be able to stop the flying Norwegian. Nitty Marky still in second place. Aita is in fourth, third place now, ahead of Dimi Mavropoulos. And in fifth position is Denis Marcel, the French rally cross champion, the leader, Shanker. Watch the power go down. Now Nitty Marky. There is the battle for third position between Aita and Mavropoulos. Getting in, getting in each other's way with Dennis Marcel now closing up. Mavropoulos taking it very tight indeed at Druids across the knife edge. And this is the second time that he's done it in this race. Martin Shanker leads. Nitty Marky second. Mavropoulos third. No, it's Aita in third position. Mavropoulos is down to fourth place and Dennis Marcel is fifth. So the Audi Quattro of Frenchman Jacques Aita is up into third place and Nitty Marky has spun so he's lost his second place coming out of Poppy's drop. Nitty Marky is having a very, very unhappy race. Quite the opposite for Martin Schenker. A distinct contrast to last year when Schenker blew a turbo and didn't even qualify to drive in the final of the big three. Now he's throwing this Zach's been powered four-wheel drive guard track Ford Escort about as though it was a kiddie car. Magnificent driving. This is the world's top man in Rallycross. Befittingly winning this race as he won in the first heat. But surprisingly, he was not the fastest in the first heat. He was nearly a second slower than Seppo Nittimarki, who he, he is so convincingly beating in this heat now out of Langley's gap, across the knife edge, another victory for Martin Schenker. But who is going to finish in second place as we look down the knife edge, waiting for him to appear? It's Jacques Aita in the Audi Coupe, in third position is Mavropoulos in the Audi, and in fourth place, Denis Marcel in the mid-edge at Matra Marina. The winner, Martin Schenker, driving gently back to the paddock. And here's how Nitty Marky lost it. Coming out of Hoppy's drop, the back end slid away, spun right round, which allowed Jack Aita to go through into second place, which allowed Mavropolis to go through into third and Dennis Marcel into fourth, while Nitty Marky recovered.
Britain's biggest ever rallycross crowd enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the racing too. Both absolutely superb. And now we're ready for the third round of heats. And in the front rank of the grid, amazingly, is Trevor Hopkins, four times British champion. I say amazingly because in his last race, Trevor inverted his Ford Fiesta at, appropriately enough, Hoppy's drop, which he was responsible for building, smashed the windscreen and uh, one or two other bits of the car. And as you can see, it is now looking immaculate. Aita, on the left-hand side of the third row, as you look at it, car number 47, Jack Aita, in the Audi Coupe is amazingly the fastest car that we have had so far because in the second round, he went round in 3 minutes 37.3. Is he going to do it again? Well, not a very good start for him. And it's Nilsson and Marcel and Hopkins as they go into the right-hander at Padigan. Look at the way Rolf Nilsson is going. He's, he's gone off. No wonder he's going so quickly. He's on the Grand Prix circuit. He's overdone it. I don't know whether he had brain fade or brake fade, but for one reason or another, Rob Nilsson has well and truly gone off, and he's going to have a struggle to get back and into the running. And it looks as though he's given it best. He had trouble in the second heat. And that is Jacques Aita, who is bundling his way through into second place as they go into... No, it's third place because Marcel is leading. Hopkins is in second place. Aita in the Audi Coupe is in third place. And it's Trevor Reeves in second place. And there's Trevor Hopkins in fourth place behind the Audi Coupe of Jacques Aita, the fastest man of the day so far. But I expect he's going to be beaten on time because now Dennis Marcel has got a clear track in front of him, the French Rallycross champion of 1984 in a car which is absolutely ideal in terms of specification for Rallycross. Mid-engine, which means to say the weight distribution is right, and four-wheel drive and enough power. Trevor Reeves then second. Aita in the Audi Coupe, gaining on Reeves as he goes down towards the right-hander at Paddock Turn, and the leader, Dennis Marcel, goes into the S's. Now, the fastest time that we have so far as Trevor Reeves is challenging Aita, the fastest time that we have so far is that of Aita, 3 minutes 37.3, because although Martin Shanker beat him, he has a 10 seconds penalty in the heats, which doesn't count in the finals, there's no penalty in the finals, so Martin Shanker's definitely got to be the man to favour for victory, as Marcel goes through on his second lap now, He's got another half lap to do to complete his second lap, and then another half lap to do to complete the race. Aita in second position now. Trevor Reeves is third. Here is Trevor Hopkins in fourth position. As the leader, Marcel exits up his drop, goes on to the still very slippery tarmac, but you can see that it's glistening. And Trevor Hopkins not having a happy day at all. He went off and off his drop. Now he's come out of it, nearly gone off the circuit, chasing, chasing Trevor Reeves, because now Aita is consolidating his second place. Trevor Reeves is in third. The leader is on his way up towards Halewood Hill, out of the S's. There he goes. There's Aita in second place, coming up Halewood Hill towards us, fighting for wheel grip, not withstanding the fact that he's got four-wheel drive, Dennis Marcel, driving straight into the sun. Round Druids, tightest corner, of course. Sets it up for Lane, this gap. Now he's not home and dry, but he's certainly home, because there's the chequered flag. Victory for Marcel. There's Aita in second place. And it's time that they're up against more than competitors because it is times that decide who go forward to the final after these qualifying heats. This is the third race for Martin Schenker. Of course, we're into the third heats. And there is the top rallycross driver in the world.
the Norwegian from Stavanger. So the front rank is Gibson to the right, Schenker in the middle with a clear circuit in front of him, Ole Arneson behind them, Will Gollop, Dimi Mavropoulos and Andy Benson and Seppo Nittimaki. And Mark Nittimaki bursting through as Schenker takes the lead, chased by Benson, but Arneson goes up into second place and Nittimaki is already up into fourth, ahead of Gibson in the yellow Porsche who's had to run very wide indeed, ahead of Mavropoulos and Will Gollop. Shanka leads into the S's. Behind him, Arneson second, Benson third, Gibson fourth. There is a traffic jam, a solid traffic jam coming out of the S's. And Nitty Mackey has spun, and now he's really got his time cut out, work cut out, because he's got to get up through the field to qualify for the final. Although he was fastest in the first heat, he wasn't very quick in the second heat. And Nitty Markey here, who's spun at the Essex, has got to really pull his socks up and get on with it. Rob Gibson ahead of Baropolis, and as they come to Hoppy's drop, we're looking now at Gibson with Mavropoulos and Will Gollop in the side. And off goes the mini there. And Nitty Markey is fighting his way up through the field already as the leader, Martin Schenker, comes into the chicane to complete his first out of two and a half laps. The fastest time that we've had so far is Jack Aita, three minutes 37.3 although Schenker beat him in the heat with a time of 3 minutes 38.6 but he had a penalty Martin Schenker of 10 seconds so Schenker will have a penalty in this heat too but so will Arneson there in second place so will Benzer there in third place so will Mavropoulos who is fourth because they are all in four wheel drive cars but Certainly Shanker is more than 10 seconds ahead of Gibson in the yellow Porsche who is in fifth place and the leading two-wheel drive competitor. Shanker across the knife edge on the second lap in this two and a half lap race. There is Arnes in the second. And just look at the way the Martin Shanker is pulling away from the four-wheel drive Audi Quattro of Arneson as Benzer scatters the plastic marker cones along the knife edge. There's Arneson drifting out off the shale onto the tarmac, followed by the Audi 80 Quattro of Andy Benzer from Austria, the Austrian champion. So it's the European and Norwegian champion Martin Schenker leading. It's the Swedish champion, Ole Arneson, and last year's Rallycross winner, on second. Two laps completed, they're on the last half lap, Andy Benzer is third. In fourth position, it's the man from Cyprus, Dimi Mavropoulos. Fifth is Rob Gibson, and here is the leader. Out of the S's, Rob Gibson having a terrific scrap with Nitty Markey. Nitty Markey's on his way to the S's that we're looking at now. There's Mavropoulos. Now, next will be Nitty Markey, who's right up to fifth position, with Rob Gibson snapping at his rear wheels with the Porsche, both of them in Porsches, and Seppo Nitty Markey is in fifth position. Rob Gibson is sixth. The leader is on the knife edge. He is at the chequered flag. He is Martin Schenker. Second there is Ole Arneson. And in third position, Andy Benson. The interest, though, is behind Dimi Mavropoulos there in fourth position. And that is the fifth place of Seppo Nittimaki in the 650 horsepower Porsche, finishing ahead of Rob Gibson. There he is, Martin Schenker, the winner. In second place behind Schenker, Ole Arneson in the Audi Quattro, and third in another Audi Quattro, an 80 is Andy Benson. This, the B final, which means, in effect, the second fastest ten competitors at the British Grand Prix Rallycross meeting here at Frank today. And there, on the right of the front row of the grid, is the completely new to Britain Swedish Rallycross driver, Orjan Valen, in a VW Beetle with a difference. It has a 400 horsepower brake engine in it, and it has four-wheel drive. Now, to everybody's surprise, in this B final is Seppo Nittimaki, and that's the Porsche on the left of Keith Ripp's car. I say to everybody's surprise, because this is the man from Finland 
who won the European round in Britain of the Rally Cross Championship of 1984 and uh, is a very doughty performer in his 650 horsepower car. But he's had all sorts of problems and he hasn't qualified for the final. And there is the man who should be in the middle of the front rank, Will Gollop, engineer from Whitstable, 12 years experience. That is a front engine, front drive car, and as you can see, he is not taking part. And straight into the lead, who very clearly win, tends to win the B final, which is over four and a half laps, goes Seppo Nittimarki with Orjan Varland snapping at his rear wing with Dimi Mavropoulos snapping at his rear wing and John Smith has spun and is having to rejoin the circuit John Smith from Ashford in his Porsche and whilst the Minis and the Fiestas struggle up Halewood Hill toward Druid's Bend because it's still very slippery and four-wheel drive certainly helps to put it mildly it's Nitty Markey leading in the four-wheel drive Porsche. It's Varland second in the four-wheel drive VW Beetle. It's Mavropoulos third. There he is in his four-wheel drive Audi Quattro. And we should be getting a copybook demonstration of how to do it from, from Helsinki. Ford and Porsche dealer Seppo Nitty Markey, 39 years old. Third in the European Championship last year. Finnish champion last year holder of the lap record at Lydon in his twin turbo car. Now he won one of the races to qualify for the Grand Prix final but did very badly indeed. Spun out in the last race and Keith Rip with the back of his car stove right in is finishing what has been a terrible day for him. A broken engine, an upturned car and now the back smashed in to drive out of the B final and I'm sure thankfully to go home. Now we are on the second lap of this four and a half lap race. There goes Mavropoulos through in third position. Roddy White in the Fiesta is in fourth place. Behind White's Fiesta is Tony Vardy's Mini. There is the leader, Nitty Markey. Now watch him, this is Hoppy's drop, you go up a bit here. Big right, it's still very, very slippery there because that shale, compounded shale. Now to the Brent's Hatch race Grand Prix circuit, running in the opposite direction of course to the way the Grand Prix cars go. Now they're turning across the entrance to the paddock. Rejoining the Grand Prix circuit in the right direction, down to paddock turn off the Grand Prix circuit, down over the grass, and Shaler Nittimarki spins, he's lost it, and Varland goes through to the lead. Mavropoulos nearly collects Nittimarki, but goes through to second place. Now, this is going to be great stuff, because Varland is leading on his first appearance at Brands Hatch in a final, a B final, having won one of the heats. He's pushed Nittimarki so hard that the thin has gone off. With 650 horsepower under his right foot, Nittimarki literally has to do a balancing act between adhesion and maximum horsepower to the ground and he lost that battle and Varland is leading the race and where is Nitty Markey? There he is behind Dimi, Dimi Mavropoulos so it is a Swede in the lead it's uh, from Cyprus Mavropoulos in second place and from Finland Sipi, uh, Nitty Markey in third position and this is the third lap Nitty Markey will surely be after a win in the B final. It's, uh, you, he's, he's been humbled not to be taking part in the Grand Prix final, and to lose the B final would be bitter gall indeed. And he's starting to close up on number eight, Mavropoulos, who is starting to close up on the leader, Orjan Varland, from Sweden. How unusual to have a four-wheel drive VW Beetle but Marlon certainly seems to have got the mixture right and to be handling it, and he's, he's not allowing the fact that Mavropoulos is pressing him to rattle him, but the four-wheel drive Audi, which goes out on the grass now and allows Nitty Markey the opportunity to close up a few feet, is definitely starting to close on the VW, and we are now on the fourth lap. 
just one complete lap to go because they finish on the opposite side of the course to the side that they start on. And that's where the checkered flag will be. And Barland will take it if he could stay where he is now. He's coming through to complete his fourth full lap when he goes through the chicane, which he's approaching now. And Nitty Marky closing in, but Propolis slides off this time. So, from Finland, Nitty Marky goes from third to second. He's lost first place to Barland, and there is the leader. And now he's into his last half lap and he's going to hit the tyres, but he doesn't, but Nijimaki can close up here and Barland's and Nijimaki's going through and takes the lead. Magnificent! Nijimaki, without even touching, I think the VW has retaken the lead. He's in the last half lap. Barland is fighting back. Great stuff, and so is Mavropoulos. Very close finish in this B final into the S's for the last time. The left, now the right, up Halewood Hill. This is where the four-wheel drive traction is absolutely essential. And round they go, absolutely together. Nitty Mark leading in the Porsche. Marlon second in the VW. Mavropoulos has overcooked it and dropped back. Now they've just got to go through Langley's gap, left-handed put the power down and surely Nitty Marky must lead although Varland's having a go as they go into that left-hander but with a burst of acceleration Nitty Marky crosses the line takes the chequered flag wins the V-final from Orjan Varland in the VW Beetle and from Dimi Mavropoulos in the Audi Quattro but Nitty Marky nearly lost that race as he came up to Paddock Turn with Varland pressing him hard. Into the right-hander went Nitty Marky. Out swung the rear of the Porsche. Too far, much too far. A masterly avoidance by Orjan Varland and by Dimi Mavropoulos. And down to third place, temporarily, went the previous leader. But then the pressure was on Varland in the lead, on the last lap as he went into the chicane. Very slippery there, you can see how slippery. Varland had taken it too wide. With his four wheels scrabbling for grip, he gets away. Nitty Marky closing up all the time on a better line, tight into the tyres. He slides a bit wide, inadvertently hits Varland, goes through to win. Assembling for the final, in position already, Ole Arneson in the Audi Quattro. That's the man who won the British Grand Prix Rallycross last year here at France. Is he going to win it again? Well, I doubt it, to be quite honest, because up against him, the determined Swede. He has another equally determined Swede, the reigning world rally champion, Stig Blomqvist, in the four-wheel drive Audi Quattro. 21 years of experience, the reigning rally cross champion of Sweden, the world rally champion of 1984 in the Audi. Martin Schenker's car. This is the most efficient car in rally cross in the world. And Martin Schenker is the man who thought it all up and with the guard track people for suspension and the four wheel drive system and with the Zaxpeed people and of course with the Ford people he's put together what seems to be a virtually unbeatable car he's not going to get much time to look at those instruments in the next few minutes in this four and a half lap race so front rank left to right Martin Schenker the reigning European champion Steek Blomqvist the world rally champion Ole Arneson last year's winner second rank Andy Benzer in the Audi Trevor Reeves the top British driver and the top two-wheel drive car then Jacques Aita the Frenchman in the Audi then Lloyd and then Marcel the Dennis Marcel the French champion in the Matra Murina with its four-wheel drive system then Barry Crump and finally Seppo Nittimaki who qualifies for the final by winning the B final and into the right-hander it's a four and a half lap it is Schenker leading it is Stig Blomqvist in second position. It's Andy Benzer in third place. And already Nitty Markey, who has been stung into action by his failure to qualify for the final, except by winning the B final, is well up amongst the leaders. But Martin Schenker now will be out to demonstrate the complete superiority of his car and himself. And that's Andy Benzer, who's got a major problem now. He will drive on, I'm sure. But that flapping bonnet top is going to be very distracting for him. And he's ahead of Ole Arneson, last year's winner, who is in fourth place. 
Now, Arneson will take his opportunity to try and get through here. He's towing along Seppo Nittimaki behind him. So Nittimaki, the winner of the B final, is already ahead of Jacques Aita in the Audi Coupe and up into fifth position. There's Nittimaki. Behind him, Aita. Trevor Reeves, with the disadvantage of two-wheel drive, is losing out and dropping down the field. And the flames coming out on the overrun from the turbocharged exhaust system of Shanker's car. Vincer going through, still in third position. Into the right-hander and Hannah. Benzer, third. Arneson still hasn't caught up with enough. Andy Benzer and Arneson now is in second position. Only Arneson is in second position. It's Dick Lomquist behind the Audi 80 of Benzer. There goes Benzer. There goes Dick Lomquist. There goes Aita. That is Nitty Markey. And now on the second full lap of this four and a half lap race, you can see now Martin Shanker. Benzer still third. Steve Blomk is challenging him for that third position. And Ole Arneson now pressing Martin Shanker very hard indeed. They're easing away from the battle for third between Benzer and Blomk. But the Zach Speed powered four wheel drive extract Ford Escort of Martin Schenker again with those flames shooting out from the exhaust system as he goes into the chicane is keeping Ole Arneson, last year's winner, at bay. So it's from Norway, Schenker. From Sweden, Arneson. Audi in second position. Audi 80, Quattro in third place. Andy Benzer from Austria holding on magnificently, keeping Stink Blomqvist away. Blomqvist trying to get through as they go out of the chicane. Now look back and you'll see there is Benzer. He's gone wide. This will give Blomqvist the opportunity to get through. He touches Benzer's car and he's keeping his foot down. He's got the inside line. Stink Blomqvist, the world rally champion, goes through and takes third place on lap three. Now, can Blomqvist do anything about catching Ole Arneson? I suspect that, fast as Martin Schenker is going, he could go faster. I think Schenker is driving a tactical race. That may surprise you, seeing how Arneson is hanging on. We'll soon see, because if, as I expect, Stig Blomqvist starts to catch Arneson, that will be the answer. Into the chicane on this, the third lap, Arneson pressing Schenker very hard indeed. Stig Blomqvist goes through in a colossal slide. Down to the right-hander at Paddock. Schenker, Arneson, now look for Blomqvist, who's absolutely on the ragged edge as they go down. There's, there's Blomqvist pulling away now from Andy Benzer. You can see how Stig Blomqvist must have been held up by Andy Benzer because now that he's got past him, he's starting to pull away. Audi Quattro's in second and third places. The Ford Escort in the lead. And there is Benzer, followed by Jacques Aita, followed by Seppo Nittimaki, and we're on lap four. Shanka leads, Arneson second, Blomqvist third, Benzer is in fourth place. In fifth position behind Benzer, it's Aita, and there's the leader. There's the second place man. They're, on, they're almost at the end of the fourth lap. They're into their last half lap shortly as they come down to the chicane again. Shanker leads. Arneson second. It's now or never as far as Ole Arneson, last year's winner, is concerned. But Martin Shanker, the European champion of 1984, as he has been three times previously, will want to make it a magnificent 1984 by winning the only full-blooded rallycross Grand Prix that is held here at Brands Hatch, and he's on his way to doing it now, up here Wood Hill for the last time, into Druids for the last time. Then he's got to drift it out of Druids, left-handed through Langley's gap, onto the knife edge for the last time, and Arneson's got it absolutely sliding, but Schenker, sure enough, is pulling away. This will be the fastest lap of the race. And Martin Schenker wins the British Grand Prix in his Ford Escort with its Zach Speed engine and Gartrack transmission from Ole Arneson's Audi Quattro. Steve Blomquist takes the third position, 
In fourth place, it is Andy Benson ahead of Jacques Aita. And in sixth position, almost catching Aita, Seppo Nitimaki from Finland in the Porsche. And I think we're going to see the usual Shanker demonstration. Martin Shanker is famous for opening the door, getting right out of the car, putting his left foot on the throttle, steering the car with his left hand, and taking a victory drive while he's actually half standing out of the car. What an incredible showman this man is. Victory at the Motorquip British Rallycross Grand Prix here at Brands Hatch to Martin Schenker, ahead of Ole Arneson second and Stig Blomqvist third. A superb victory, rounding off a magnificent season for the best driver in Rallycross.